Hi there, my name is Alastair Kennedy and I'm the Sociable Social Worker and I give practical tips to social workers and those wanting to foster and adopt. In this video, we're going to look at what it takes to be an interim or agency social worker or manager. And I'm going to give you some top tips on how I survive as an agency social worker. So stay tuned and let's get on with it. Top tip number one, have a decent nest egg. You need to have at least six months of your wages in the bank before you even think about working as an agency or interim worker. Now, when you're an agency worker, you will get well paid, that's without a doubt. But remember, you don't get a pension, you don't get sick pay, and you have to still pay tax, and that can be a quite a difficult thing to navigate. So what I would suggest is you set yourself up as self-employed or as a limited company, which I am, which makes it easier. Hire an accountant, takes out all the hassle, I know people use apps now to do their accounts. I find it easier just to pay an accountant and I think it costs me about £1,200 a year. Top tip number two, always be true to yourself. When an agency phones, make sure that you've got the right skill set for the job. Sometimes it can be tempted to say, mm, well, I could maybe just fit that in. Can I do that? Do I know how to do that? Well, I've got a bit of experience in that. No, it's not going to work and they're going to find out within the first couple of weeks that you can't actually do the job. So be true to yourself. If you've got a lot of fostering experience, great, and it's an adoption job, be honest. Do you have that adoption experience? If you don't, walk away. There'll be other opportunities that always is. Top tip number three, ask for help. And that goes, ask for help with the agency, ask for help when you're in a job, because if you ask for help for people and you can navigate your way around a job and an agency job and an interim job and actually undertake the job properly, then people will hire you back. So for example, I worked in Bernardo's several times because I was able to ask for help and I was able to use the skill set that I had, but I couldn't have done it without the rest of the staff and without the rest of the managers helping me. Tip number four, don't do it all. If you can, it's quite good to be able to outsource some things to people. So for example, I've been working with a foster agency and I don't have the time at the moment to go through all their policies and procedures, but I've spoken to a friend of mine who's very, very good at policy and procedure work and I've outsourced it to them. Don't do anything that you don't have the time to, nor don't do anything that you haven't got the skill set for. Tip number five, take your time and choose your employment agency your interim agency carefully. There's lots out there and most of them are really good. I think there are some that are still, you know, someone sitting up in a back bedroom somewhere. But actually, you know, sometimes that's not so bad. Sometimes they can be quite keen, they can be quite hungry. But what I like to do, and I have worked with the same agency for the last three or four years and had another couple in the background that will phone me from time to time. And I have really good relationships with them. I spend a lot of time speaking with them. We do go and meet for lunch. And it's important that you keep that relationship going because you don't know what's going to happen in the downtimes when you finish a contract. All those different relationships, some agencies get are busier than others, some are bigger than others, and some have different contacts than others. So it's important that you keep those relationships and those relationships are key. Tip number six, think about the times when to take a break. It's really easy if you're an interim social worker or an agency social worker not to take holidays. Because you're just thinking, well, I just need the money. I need to keep going. I need to keep going. I'm not getting paid for holidays, so I'm going to lose out in loads of money. But actually, do you know what? Having a holiday is going to make it a lot. You're going to be a lot fresher when you go back to that job in a week's time or two weeks' time. You know, you're earning all this money, and it's good money. So what you need to do is spend it, you know, on a decent holiday or even just spending time at home. It's important. And I've mentioned this in other videos it's about self-care, isn't it? It's about managing yourself and making sure that you're okay. Tip number seven, face up if your time is done. There's been numerous contracts I've said to people, actually, do you know what? I've done what I set out to do and what you asked me to do. There's no need for you to keep me on any longer because all that's going to happen is you're going to get demotivated and you're going to get fed up. It's better to go in places, do what you need to do, make your objectives, meet your project scope and then leave rather than as elongated, I'll stay for one year or two years. That's not interim. So there you have it, my top tips for being an interim social worker or an agency social worker. I mean, all your friends will be saying, oh, you're loaded being an agency social worker. But in reality, you've still got bills to pay. You've still got to live like everybody else. So it's important. And I hope these top tips 
have actually helped you. If you if they have, let me know in the comments, please. And if you're new to the channel, if you could subscribe, that would be really helpful. And if you liked the video, give it a like. And if you want some notifications for other videos, then ring the little bell. Ding-a-ling-a-ling. -a -ling. Okay, thanks very much.